Breaking Bad is a show uh, that is very weighty and dramatic and has a lot of darkness at its core. And you got to have some humor to leaven the darkness. <sighs> Saul Goodman's character was created in large part as a sort of a leavening agent for the show. We, we knew we wanted a character who was a bit of a clown. Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. Did you know that you have rights? The Constitution says you do. And so do I. We had the idea early on that Bob Odenkirk, whom, whom we all loved from Mr. Show, would be marvelous in this role. Good afternoon. Nice to meet you, Saul Goodman. Nice to meet you. You're not that lawyer on late night television, are you? Better call Saul. I didn't meet with Vince. I got a phone call from my agent saying they're going to offer you a role and you should take it. It's a great role, a great show. And I said, what's the show? Breaking Bad. I called a friend and he was like, oh my God, that's my... Favorite show of all time, you've got to do it. So that was a good vote of confidence. What'd you say to Babyface, huh? Did you say anything stupid? Bob Odenkirk playing Saul Goodman. Terrific addition to the show when he came on and, and bringing his unique style of, of reality. I mean, he's a comic uh, actor in a sense, but it wouldn't hold up if there wasn't a sense of reality and honesty to it. And that's what Bob is able to do, much better than our first choice, which was, um, uh, who was our first choice? No, he's kidding. <laughs> Bob Odenkirk is much more professional than any of us. So in between takes, you know, we're just, we're eating, you know, chips, Doritos and water and uh, Bob's just sitting in his chair, just focused. And we're just joking around, and Bob doesn't want to be bothered. You know, he's just a, he's a professional actor, and um, we're, just, we're just lucky to have a job. The thing I love about Bob is when I first met him, our first conversation was, in fact, about what does Saul's hair look like? He said, I really think uh, Saul Goodman should have kind of a mullet. You know, business in the front, party in the back. That's, uh, that's what he wanted. He laughed, and he said... Uh, that sounds awesome. So here's what I got. See, these are pieces. Comb over, right? Starts way down here. And then if you look in the back, there's more pieces. And uh, they give me the semi-mullet. His office was built to intimidate and impress a bunch of homeboys and gangsters who think, well, here's the law, there's the Constitution on the wall behind him, and pillars, must, he must be important. And then I draw from this stuff who the character is and from his monologue and from what he says about himself, about he changed his name, he's, his name isn't Saul Goodman. My real name's McGill. Yeah, the Jew thing I just do for the homeboys. They all want a pipe hidden member of the tribe, so to speak. You know, and he's just conning everyone. Let's not lose sight of the fact that you were the victim of a terrible accident, Antonio, so some discomfort is to be expected. As Jesse Pinkman says in the first episode we ever see uh, Saul in. You don't want a criminal lawyer, right? You want a criminal lawyer. And yet he is a very good advocate for his, his clients. Just so long as you pay his bill and you do not use American Express. Mr. Emertrata has become the subject of a vicious, uh, relentless, and unwarranted DEA persecution. Saul's verbosity means I have a lot of studying to do with every script I get. These are long monologues, they're kind of circuitous logic oftentimes. Uh, a lot of times Saul is sort of testing the waters with what he's saying. You guys quivering in the bushes and peeping through your little binoculars, it's, well, it's disturbing. <laughs> and it's taken a toll on his mental and physical well-being. The client looks fine to me. Well, some hurts only show on the inside. Bob Odenkirk does Saul just phenomenally. Sometimes I just find myself enjoying his performance. You know? <laughs> I have to kind of bring myself back into the scene because I enjoy watching him uh, do his shtick. Where'd you get your law degree, Goodman? The same clown college you got that suit. You know who likes his suit? Judge Papadumian. She thinks I'm a snappy dresser. You know what Judge Papadumian hates? Police harassment of a senior citizen. Sorry. Saul Goodman, of course, is absolutely hilarious at times. The moments I like best are when uh, Saul Goodman is actually in a life and death situation and serious as a heart attack. You're not Clarence Darrow, Saul. You're a two-bit bus bench lawyer. And you work for me. 
Yeah, well, Clarence Darrow never had a client like you ask him for something like this. We realize in hindsight, at the end of last season, uh, Saul, with the help of his security guard, Huell, lifted this, this ricin-laden cigarette off of Jesse Pinkman. Big borrower steal, I'm your huckleberry. I go the extra mile. He's realized in hindsight that this scam that uh, Walt was pulling was in aid of poisoning a child. Only you never told me that kid would wind up in the hospital. His world's gotten darker and more scary when it wasn't before. It was almost like play for him, like fun. Um, so I have to reconnect with that, kind of the danger that's around him uh, all the time. You know, take that thing and get the hell out of here. You and me, we're done. Walt takes on the Heisenberg sensibility and for the first time he's using that ability to intimidate as a drug. What are you? Come on. Hey. Hey. It's a very, very powerful drug for a man. It's, it's, uh, it fills, you know, you with, with um, adrenaline and confidence. And so I approach him and tell him, We're done when I say we're done. Bob told me later, he said, Man, you really scared me. I went, oh, that's good. Unfortunately for Saul, he doesn't quite have the, uh, the moral fiber and the uh, innate courage of Jesse Pinkman. Saul, at the end of the day, he'll, he'll make a big noise about how Walt is the devil, but he will continue to work for the devil because he values his own neck. Being given this role was a surprise to me, and having it become as much a part of the show and all, it's like a gift that they keep giving to me. <laughs>